Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 The Earl Fleming Dynasty. It's been over two weeks since I last played this game and I tell you throughout those two weeks I've been itching to get back to playing this game. Since I left off last time certain things were transpired in the comment section which made me excited I have to say. We'll go through those in a brief moment, but before we do, just a couple of things that people have highlighted, as they usually do, which uh, I need to s address this session. Now, for, uh, 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 I suppose we'll go here first. Apparently, I invited a new steward to my court not so long ago, and if we look at him, he's of House Verikovich. He's also heir to the county of Zmud. <laughs> but um, I don't know if it is actually a relation of Bella's, my uh, bastard child, no less, because he was married into House Rukovic. Oh god, it's too complex to, uh, to comprehend here. Right, okay. I will get to the bottom of this, don't you worry. Here's Bella. He's died not so long ago, 1126, a while ago. He was married to Countess... Countess... who? Yes, Countess Yeah, Countess Yeah. Her? Oh, he was married to her. Elizaveta. And they had plenty of children. Plenty. So, uh, wow, it's a very big house, is this? So, my current uh, steward is all the way down here. Distant relation. He's not related to me at all, but he is uh, an in law of my bastard relative from long ago. So, there you go. That's just sort of dad's issue out. Just of interest as to who he was. He's not quite a relation. A very, very distant in-law, to be uh, exact. Right, retinues then. I used retinues for the first time last time. Here we have a standing army of 1,500 men. I uh, go to my military screen here and I can see the retinues and there's a retinue cap which is stands at 200 and uh, 2,700 at the moment. Now apparently I was looking at this wrong. I thought this was the actual number of men I could recruit into my retinue, 2,700. Actually, that is the retinue cap. And it's almost like uh, based on a points system. Uh, my retinue cap's 2,940 actually. I'm actually currently using 2,700. But uh, it's, uh, it's like a point system. And as we see here, heavy infantry where is it here? Heavy infantry costs two points for each soldier. Light cavalry costs two. Heavy cavalry costs four, and archers cost one. So it's like a it's like a point system. So all these retinues are 500 men, but because of the various makeups of the different units, some of them are more expensive than others. So that is the cap. So uh, from what I have spent, um, I've got 1,500 men, which will be three units. And uh, those three units cost 2,700. So I literally have no more room for another uh, unit of retinues just yet. So I understand retinues a little bit better than I did. <laughs> so thank you to uh, Rancor260, who was the first person that actually highlighted this to me, uh, which has helped immensely of my understanding of uh, the use of retinues. So 1500 men for now shall suffice. It's a standing army and since I have now paid for them they are currently free. Of course it costs money to have them reinforced but for now that's not the case. Something else that was brought to my attention and it was brought to my attention first of all by Liadon on my forums. In the last part or the last session the Count of Leon who was also the Count of Cornier was uh, he rose up in an uprising against me. Oh, well, not an uprising as such, he defended his lands. I wanted to revoke Cornier, I concocted a plot, 
put it to him and he said no basically and fought me for the revocation. Of course I won and gifted it to my nephew. However, I've been told that because he resisted my advances, uh, apparently I can revoke his title here now as well for no penalty because he's rose up against me. Is that true? Yeah, he's classed as a traitor for rising up against me and therefore no one, no, none of our vassals will object and there is a 5% chance he will revolt. In fact, we can... <laughs> because he's acted dishonourably against us, we could also have him imprisoned if we so wish. Wow, we could really go to town on this man. All he did was defend his land. <laughs> but I am the leader, I am the ruler of the family. You don't go against me, child. It feels so wrong to do this. But hey, you've got to be cruel to be kind sometimes. And we can't have vassals with such a negative opinion of us. It's just being allowed to wander free. So, uh, yeah. I don't think imprisonment is quite right. But we'll certainly, def we'll certainly uh, revoke his title. And because we have one extra domain slot available, we'll keep it for now. For ourselves. 5% chance he'll revolt. He's now considering a revocation. Considering? He hasn't got a bloody choice. <laughs> So we'll let that continue on. So uh, we're going to play a little bit with him. We've uh, we were ha we're happy to leave him with one land. He didn't want to know anything about it, so he's going to end up with none. It's a shame when that happens, I'm afraid. But uh, I don't teach people to go against my wishes. Right. What's next on my agenda? Let's just take a look at the vassal opinions. It's been a while since I've played. Any more problems? He'll be gone soon. The Earl of Vath. He is next. He is next. He's my next problem, I think. And also the Earl of Pentiev. So these two, if we can get some more vassals there that like us, we're, we're going to be looking fairly good there in uh, Brittany. But then definitely uh, on the right track. So things looking up there. We're 60 years old, 60 years young, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, apparently, this is something I just want to test out. I'm not going to do it, but it's something I want to test out here. Yes, it's right. We have a val yes, that is right. Apparently, because Norm is it Normandy? I think it is Normandy. Is actually de jure part of France. France's crown laws apply to to Normandy. So, because Normandy uh, have such a low crown authority, we could have pressed our de jure claim on Vexin far sooner. I thought it was England's crown law that dictated this, but it's actually France's. So that's something else that Liadon pointed out to me. I thank you for that. And one more thing. Apparently... Um, he's trying to... Still trying to kill, <laughs> although the plot is so weak. My current Earl now, he was the... Uh, was my former Chancellor before he was promoted. He still is my Chancellor, actually. And uh, we might be able to swing him to come to our court with a gift. And apparently if that was to happen, he, he would end the plot. But because the pot is so weak, I don't really want to give him 20 of my gold coins. So we'll let that, we'll let that ride, that particular plot. And all these other ones really don't affect me at all. So we can leave those as they are. That's in relation to my son, I think. Yeah, we're not going to have him imprisoned. So, all in all, I think that is pretty much the initial things sorted out. Sorry it takes a little bit longer than normal, but I'm just getting back into the swing of things. Now there are a couple of wars going on in England, which are going to be pertinent, I think, to what's going to happen here. There are some factions, or a faction, with several members trying to lower the Crown Authority and going to war against uh, King Adam, who, if we look at his uh, realm tree, we can see that he has uh, only 1,500 men at his disposal. 
this moment in time. His own troops have been decimated in several wars over the years and he has been a, a very uh, staunch defender of the land. He's faced many rebellions and he's come out not quite smelling of roses but he's come out victorious on more than one occasion and he's not going to go down without a fight. And in the last session another faction came to the fore Earl Henry for England. Earl Henry being a relation of mine, I think it's this Henry here, my cousin, has a weak claim on England and therefore a faction can be started to put him on the throne. And I have my own son here, Bohemond of Evro. He too has a weak claim on England, which means a, a faction can be started to put him on the throne which I didn't really uh, contemplate at the end of the last session, which is why I joined Henry's faction. However, now that I am aware of that, a couple of things. Leave this pathetic faction, trying to put my cousin on the throne, and start my own faction, where I want to put my own son there. So where is he? There you go. Earl Bohemond for England and if this faction is successful we're gonna have ourselves a Fleming King. So uh, straight away we create that faction automatically because of our levy size we have 610 percent plot power which means we can instantaneously demand uh, our cl uh, demand our our faction be be pressed however we're at war. Right here. That can be sorted out pretty swiftly. By going to the Duke of Connacht and saying, Excuse me, Duke, I am so foolish, I don't want to have a war with you. In fact, I'm going to offer you a white piece. I lose a little bit of prestige, and he gains prestige, but the war ends. And of course, he's going to be extremely happy with that, because if he isn't, we're going to crush him like a bug. So that's going to end our war therefore putting us at peace, therefore allowing us to press my son's claim on England's throne. And then the fun and games begin. So, without further ado, let's start the session proper. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the extended uh, explanations there, but a uh, few things happening. And we're reaching a pivotal point in the campaign, I feel. It's just a shame I had to end, uh, go away on holiday at that particular moment. Okay, so, uh, yes. It grieves him deeply, but do you know what? I don't give a flying cahoot. <laughs> so goodbye, Earl Girek, which means we are now rulers of the county of Leon, making us, or taking us up to four out of four, which is excellent. So before we go any further, I'm just going to look to my intrigues here to see if there's any other f counties that we can revoke. Although technically I don't want to go into a war right now. So, uh, we could fabricate a claim, oh that's fine. So no plots for us to really consider, so that's for our first piece of business sorted. Excellent, we have become the Earl of Leon, thank you. Bump it up to two speed. He's accepted the white piece, excellent, so we are no longer at war, so we're going to dismiss our levies. Although, technically speaking, we need to take them back into friendly territory before we do it. <clears throat> so as soon as it gets back to friendly territory, we're going to dis uh, disband the troops, and then we're going to press our claim. Well, this is going to be touch and go. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work. Disband. Good old Duke George I. 60 years old. When we press this faction and go to war for England's throne, if, for instance, Duke George was to die, would that put an end to the war? Is it too risky to start a long... because it's going to be a long and drawn out war. To claim England, we're going to have to capture a lot of England's territories, which is pretty much the Flanders, Vexin, most of the King's own lands, and any lands of those that are loyal to him. And uh, that's going to take some time. Could take about five to ten years. So, uh, <laughs> if there's a risk of him dying on us halfway through that arduous affair, it might be better better we wait. 
but I didn't research it. <laughs> Rather foolishly, I should have done. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna chance it. So if we go to the intrigues, we go to the uh, is it the plot? No, it's not the plots. It's here. We're gonna send the ultimatum to King Adam. Relinquish your throne to my son, or face war. Now, even though he is extremely disadvantaged, there is no way he's going to relinquish his throne. He's a fighter, <laughs> for goodness sake. He's not going to turn his throne over to a, some stranger. So there will be war, and it will be bloody. Your shameful attempt at blackmail has not succeeded. No matter how many corrupted souls you have enticed to help carry out your plan, I will not give in without a fight. I would expect no less from a king. War it is, my friend. War it is. And off we go. The Normandy war to press Bohemond onto England's throne begins. This could be the start of something. So before we commence any further, we're going to have to come up with a strategy. We can call in the vassals of our liege, or our former liege, to see if they will assist us. They are already tied up with their own wars, so it's going to be unlikely. But if you don't ask, you don't get. So we're going to ask all of his former vassals if they will join our um, war. And some of them, maybe, you see, maybe they might come. So we're going to ask the Duke of Lancaster if he will come along. We're going to ask the Duke of York if he will come along. The Duke of Hereford well he's not going to come along so we're not even going to bother asking. Duke of Kent she's going to come along or maybe going to come along. We've got Prince Godfrey of England maybe. Earl of Winchester no. Henry of Somerset? No. And Junk Folk again. So we're about a 50 50 split. Those who like us more and those who like the king more. Which means if we put our son on the throne and are successful, it's going to be a bit of a rocky ride to gain some stability in England. But we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. That's a long way away. So before we start off, then, let's get our forces organised. The standing army doesn't have a leader. We're going to give them Earl of Gwent, Ranulf, who is my nephew. He's going to head the force, head the army, and he's going to take them across to Vexin. And they're going to starve them out. That's the first uh, settlement to fall. And once they're done with Vexin, they will then head to Maine. I also need to f sort out my... Uh, levies. I have quite a bit of levies here to play with, so uh, I think the best thing to do is just raise them all and organise them as best I can. Split them between Flanders and England. I don't anticipate having to use mercenaries just yet. Right, so as you can see we have Higgledy Piggledy now I suck with army movements pretty much, but we're going to have to find some form of, uh, some sort of order here. Right, so that's 1,000, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000 men. So I think if these block go into Flanders, and these lot could also go into 5, 6, 800, 1,400 men there. Yeah. Okay. So if these men go into England, these men go into Flanders, the, this guy goes to Vexin, and we'll have three armies to split between the uh, various parts of England. I think that's the best thing. 